so it didn't rain today, which is awesome. So I've, I've just been kind of hiding out in the house for a few days. <laughs> it's been so wet and raining and awful. But I got to think about um, dealing with some pest issues. Um, yeah, I usually would, um, you know, kind of handle it more often, but it's just been so pouring down rain. I just like, whatever happens. <gasps> this bok choy at the end of the kale patch here. Ooh, it's getting eaten by something. What is it? Uh, there's our buddy. And another buddy. Lots of buddies down in there. The plan with this bok choy at the ends of the rows. I've got this one and bok choy at all the other ends here. Was that I would have, you know, a piece of wood along the side here so that the slugs would like go to sleep there during the day and then I could check for them. But they, you know, when it gets this big, cause they kind of just camp out in the plant itself. So I don't know, I'm still gonna go ahead and if I get to it, put some pieces of wood along here. So just for a quick look-see while we're right here, these are the carrots that I planted with the Jang cedar and they came up pretty nicely. There's so many rows, I don't know how I'm going to actually weed, but maybe they'll form a canopy real quick. I don't have to worry about it. And those were the giants of Colmar and this is the romance that I planted earlier. And boy, I like those rows. This is the greenhouse with the cucumbers in it. And got some boards over here. And I just tip them over and I check for slugs and snails. Okay, so I've got a little fella right here. I'll add him to the pile. Ugly duckly, so got the two greenhouses behind me and we are over here in the potato patch. I had a slug problem earlier this year, so I put some boards. Oh, there's a little guy right there. I put them by the potatoes here. So this is my pile of slugs, all sleeping. And I take them out. And I just dump them off. <laughs> I usually have my stick. So the theory is they're not gonna wanna go out in the open along this road here, the driveway. And they're not gonna wanna come through from the main road out through this is muskeg. It's super, super saturated, even more saturated than what a slug could live in. This is what we call the dismal bog. And it's really wet. That's what I'm talking about. So occasionally we were getting a break from the rain. So I would come out like once a week and check through the clover and I found a bunch of little slugs actually concentrating on eating the clover and not eating the kale or chard. So that was pretty cool. This is the critter that I'm seeing, a catapult pillar of sorts that I uh, captured and I've got one up at the house to see what he grows up into. I think he's gonna grow up to be a spotted cutworm. What do you guys think? I'm also seeing some Looks like eggs laid on the back of some of the kale and chard. And so I really need to go through here and just check the backs real quick, just so that I don't have a bunch of them hatching out. But uh, yeah, up until now, it's like I, I'm going swimming if I come out here and check. I'm super wet, so I don't know. Yeah. Okay, so now I am by the greenhouse with the basil and sugar snap peas right behind me. So just a week or so ago, I came out here and checked the peas for blight because they were getting it at the base of their stems. So I've got my sugar and sugar snap peas here. And over here, I've got my super sugar snap peas. Now last year I grew these in the same row, so I couldn't really tell how tall the sugar ants actually got because they're a smaller size pea. 
but they're looking about less than half the height. So what I wanted to show you though, was that I'm already getting blight. We've had really wet, wet year. And so I'm already getting these little, little round marks. But now it's gone from their stems all the way up to the top. You know, eventually it just gets on the peas themselves and they start to get spotted and then you can't really sell them. And uh, so it's pretty bad on these uh, shorter sugar ands, but these are the super sugar snaps and it's coming up quite high on them. So down at the base, you can see they're just dying. And you can start seeing the spots. And so I don't know how many of these peas. So these peas, I'll be able to harvest these for the first time this week. They're starting to plump up. And the, these um, super sugar snaps are just the nicest peas. Big and juicy and great, but it may just take over and I maybe won't get that many peas off this. So we'll see. These are the potatoes that I planted by the peas. And this soil's not that great. I didn't really amend it, so they're kind of little guys. Okay, so we are in the basil greenhouse, and so I was pretty good about getting the little slugs out of here earlier in the year, but let's see, got some slug issues, or I don't know, it could be some other critter too. It's hard to tell. This looks like slug issues, but um, yeah, so I gotta come out here at night and see if I can't find a few. I've got Oh, these bok choy at the ends of the beds here for slug attractants like out you know in the garden but look how big these are and healthy compared to um to the bok choy out there and yeah boy they're pretty clean too but uh slugs love basil and i think they're always just going to go to that first Oakley Doakley, I am in the cucumber greenhouse and actually got quite a few cucumbers coming on. Can you see those guys? Uh, so I think I might be able to put them in the salad pack this week. I've got mustard greens on the bed ends in this greenhouse and, but I don't have that much slug damage on them. Just have not had much of a slug problem in this greenhouse this year. These are the mustard greens. They're doing so nice. I'm actually selling them to my number one customer. This is orange right here next to the mustard greens back behind the cucumbers here. And I thin them so that, you know, there'd just be plants every foot or so. But these leaves are a little bit too big to kind of go in you know, like a salad mix. So I think what I need to do is just kind of keep planting a new thing, a new succession of orange so that I have kind of more of a, you know, like a baby green size for salad mixes. Something that worked really well is these jars at the bottom of each of the legs on these tables that were full of water. I actually need to fill them with water again, but I was kind of keeping them full of water and that kept the slugs from going up the legs and onto the table and eating my starts, which I had a real problem with last year. That's a, some dill and some cilantro I need to plant out. So um, yeah, that worked really well. I, I had planned to have a metal fence along the edge of the beds to keep the slugs out of the beds, but I wasn't able to get that. I, it seems like it's just available in England. So I need to think about that because that would be really nice to have in the, the basil greenhouse. <laughs> you got the itchy scratchers? So the sun came out finally after forever. Um, I opened up my poly low tunnel and I've got my greenhouses opened up and I'm actually watering three beds in the greenhouse. They haven't had water in forever. Um, 
it's supposed to rain tomorrow, so I'm trying to dry everything out. And uh, then I think, just, you know, just this few hours, I'm going to clean up the lettuces and, you know, like the outer stuff that I didn't harvest, kind of get that all cleaned up. And then also go through the kale and chard to see if I can find like leaves with eggs on them so I can pull those off and get rid of them. Otherwise, I'm going to have a huge problem. I'll probably have a huge problem anyway. But anyway, um, that's what I'm doing. The sun is really going to help with drying these cucumbers out. I've been plucking off the blossoms at the ends when they get a little bit raggedy because they're, they're getting they get wet and they just kind of mildew the ends of the cucumbers. But these guys over on this side that have been struggling, some of them have been just totally succumbed to the mildew. And they just haven't had enough sun to uh, overcome that after I put the, you know, rotted seaweed around their bases. So lots of mildew. So it's past midnight. I'm out here checking everything. And I know, I mean, this looks like slug damage, but I'm not seeing any slugs. Okay, I checked the greenhouse, the basil, and I already checked the one with the cucumbers. So I'm gonna check everything out here. I'm over here by the sugar snap peas. These guys are just totally toast. It's so sad. The blight has got them really, really bad. They're toast. But this was where I saw the toad that other night hopping around here and then he went through the fence. So last year, the peas, these are the super sugar snaps. And uh, they were covered in slugs and cutworms. But I'm not seeing anything in here. I'm finding some slugs on the chard, but I'm finding an awful lot of them just in the clover, eating the clover. So I found most of the slugs in the chard. And now I'm seeing this one right here on the bok choy. It's all torn to pieces. <laughs> and more bok choy slugs. Okay, I'm at the very end of the garden here. There's the sand moat and the mint bowl there. And I've got this little row of bok choy along here. All kind of bolted to seed, but... La la la, slug. I'm at the very end here by the mint and I got um, mustard greens right here. It's the end of the row of bok choy and boy is he torn up. Now look what we have here. Oop. Sluggage. The thing I hate about polylo tunnels is that they're it's hard to check for pests so I don't know. I'm gonna give a peek inside there I think. I took a real, just a quick look over the top of the potatoes over here in the berry patch and not seeing anything obvious. So I'm going to take my little parcel of slugs here. Not too many. If I could do this, you know, once a week at night, I might get a kind of handle on these guys. Okay, so now we're going to go out to the road and dump these little guys and then I can go to sleep. Hey guys, so I came out here to the garden to um, get some bird pictures for you because, um, you know, the birds have been helping quite a bit with pests. I mean, they eat like, you know, the caterpillars and probably even slugs and stuff like that, but uh, they're not out here right now. It's kind of raining and uh, it's supposed to rain today and tomorrow, but then they say it's supposed to dry up for a number of days. So anyway, um, yeah, so throughout the summer, I've been seeing like, Blue jays, robins, and the dark-eyed juncos kind of come in here pecking around, eating bugs and stuff. So I think they're a pretty big help. 
But yeah, didn't get any bird pictures. So what I'll leave you with is a little video I took of Squirrel when he was searching for seeds in the driveway. Before I sign off guys, um, I just wanted to say, remember how early this year, because I didn't cover my kale, I was afraid it was gonna get hit by the root maggot fly because it did kill a cup of my bok choy. Well, I got lucky. So I don't know if I want to chance it again next year without cover, but man, I got lucky. I wonder if he stashed some of his spruce. Oh my gosh, a mosquito is biting my ear. Okay. Oh my goodness. Oh. Is he gonna yell at me? I scared him. I scared him when I scratched my ear. Is that where he saved some of his little seeds? Just like under the rocks in the road? Oh, what a silly little goose. Hello.